Now with this, uh, may I now invite, I would call the Bhishma Pitama of the automotive sector, uh, Shri Sudhanthu J. Sina, sir, uh, advisor in Infrastructure Connectivity, Transport and Electric Mobility at Niti Ayo. Thank you. So this acronym of, you see, Bhishma Pitama is very difficult to be answered. That is a way of saying that whatever you wanted to do, you have done, now it's time for you to see. But I have got still many things to do, which I don't want to miss this opportunity. So, to Mr. Saurabh Dalila, the Invest India representative here, Mr. Vini Mehta, my friend Ragnish, and to all the distinguished ladies and gentlemen who are here. Please accept my appreciation for the wonderful sector in which you are working. So when Mr. Mehta was saying, say, saying that uh, the world is looking at India, let me qualify your statement. The world is looking at automobile sector of India. So whenever you go to a government of India's presentation, I always try to see that where is automobile in it. And let me tell you with tremendous satisfaction, I am able to locate it in the top one or two kind of rows it is there. Its place is reserved. A sector that contributes seven odd percent of to the national GDP and 50 percent, 49 percent to be precise, of manufacturing GDP, contributing almost, giving almost 37 million employment opportunities directly or, the, or indirectly, that cannot be written off. It's most pivotal. See, that is why I say that in India's growth journey, its growth story, the most dynamic, the most central focus has to be automobile. It has to be. EV is another big game changer. So when I talk of EV, then I see that the CAGR is 49%. So every year it is growing by 49%. Rarely there is a sector in the Indian economy that has growth rate of 49%. Now I'm focusing on EV alone. Our sense is that in the period between say in another seven odd years, by the time we will be reaching 2030, our annual sales of EV will be close to 10 million units annually. And that is that is going to bring large change. 50 million employment opportunities, job opportunities directly in that is going to be So this is the reason why automobile is the focus in the national growth story. And in that growth story, EV becomes so critical, so important. At Niti Aayog, there is a national mission on transformative mobility and battery storage. I am the mission director. My CEO is the mission chief, and there is an interministerial committee that we take it forward. And you know, we are always thinking how to take it forward. So when we launched the flagship programs of Fame, Fame One, the version two, the re strategized Fame, all those things. PLI schemes, all those were online. We knew it well that until we have the buying of the states, we will not be able to move forward. So, the first state EV policy took 29 months to be positioned. After 29 months, in the month of September 2017, Karnataka was the first state to kind of script and release their EV policy. We were, that was, you know, it brought a lot of enthusiasm to us. In next 29 months, nine states joined the league. So that was, you know, that's all the more positive. And in next 29, that is less than that, 27 year, 27 months, Almost 19 states joined with a policy, with a clear-cut policy, out of which three states recalibrated their policy. So Karnataka, 
Uttar Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, they revise their policies, they upscale their policies. And that is how today, almost 33 out of 36 states and union territories combined together, they are having EV policies. States view them as something that will bring about investment opportunity, that will create a lot of jobs, bring them tax revenue, expand their manufacturing base, and at the end of the day, bring about prosperity in the state. This is the reason why in all the investors' conference, you see the states are trying to locate those investors who are willing to invest in the EV areas. This is the reason. Now, if you see that uh, among the states also, as it happens, all of them are differential and different mm -hmm. level are there. But what I find an absolute synergy is that all of them want today, at least, to be partner of progress in electric mobility. And from Niti Ayo, you must have heard also in the budget, there is a new intervention that has started that is called state support mission. So in a way, kind of, you know, guiding, directing, and uh, funding also in a way to these states to on the, on the route ahead, on the route ahead. So one of the offerings that we are planning to make to these uh, states is that how to make them all the more sensitive, all the more responsible, all the more responsive to the investors, to the industry players in the area of electric mobility. So this is, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the grand design with which we are going ahead with. And my sense is that the way it is moving, you know, whatever targets, whatever we are able to see, we will be able to not only achieve them, but very emphatically surpass them. So this is what my sense is. You know, we never expected uh, around two and a half, three years back, that the way our EV industry is pushing on today, it will be like that. But it, we did achieve it. And when the PLI schemes were being launched, both the PLIs, the way it has, the way industry players have responded to it, that is again something on this. So for example, this PLI, I always give example of this advanced chemistry cell. And there was a, you know, we wanted to take it forward somehow. They wanted to kind, we wanted to always kind of persuade us to reduce the uh, standards of efficiency. Because the sense was that you will not get better. So I still recollect one of the, one of the foreign embassy officials. He said that with this, uh, para, with, uh, with this quality parameters, you will not get the bidders. So of course, uh, I was at DHI and I, was, I said that, okay, how do you know that you may not be able to manufacture it? How do you know that there's no one else who is ready to manufacture it at the same and uh, will be willing to give a bid for that? But anyway, you know, uh, it was, uh, uh, we did not get disheartened. Of course, minister himself was personally present in that meeting, I admit. But when the bids were open and when there was a bidder for 130 gigawatt, you know, that is something else. Right? We are supporting 50 gigawatt. If each gigawatt, you know, there is requirement for 800 to 1000 pro rupees, that means with 130 gigawatt, there is requirement for 130,000 pro rupees. What an amazing confidence that the industry players have imposed on us on the scheme, on the, on the entire thing that this is going to sail through. So this is what, you know, I always take it as the best appreciation for the government ever that so many people, they give their bed, they technically qualify also, not that they don't qualify. It's a different thing that because, you know, you are our limit work, there is limitations, we are bound by that. But otherwise, they were willing to invest. And today, there are a good number of players which are, who are taking it forward, not at a giga scale, but maybe at a lower scale for the advanced industry manufacturing. Now at ICAT, 
let me tell you that this entire thing, this advanced chemistry cell, this automobile components, this auto units, this entire electric mobility automobile as a, as a, as a complete, you know, bigger set of it. Let me tell you this, all of them are technological thing. The technology cannot be, you cannot go for anything that is obsolete, that is, that is, that is, that has got very little shelf life. You have to immediately be on your feet trying to develop new technologies. We have done our bit. We have persuaded the IITs and today 16 out of 23 IITs, they have opened up centers of excellence and they have crafted some 13 new programs in which 18 interdisciplinary departments have participated. This is what we are doing, we have done for the IITs, but that is not enough, you see. What we have been trying to persuade them is uh, that rather than going to deep research, what is requirement is that get connected to the industry players, ask them for a specific problem statement that they face on their assembly lines, fix a time schedule in within which you are going to deliver the solutions, and of course financial support and all those things, and then go ahead. Because that is what the ecosystem will be, you know, that will be how we will be taking it forward. So my sense is that we are going to pull off something awesome. The only reason is that there is tremendous amount of trust among all the stakeholders, all the key players into this ecosystem. So by default, I would say we work on trust until it is proved otherwise. So with that kind of synergy, with that kind of team spirit, and that kind of sense of trust amongst each other, I am sure that in the in times to come, electric mobility will be taking you know leaps and bounds. It will be moving, and in this mobility journey, in this movement, I am equally sure that ICAT will be playing a key role with the help of each one of you. Thank you.